so much drama in the LBC. It's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double G, but I somehow, some way, keep coming up with funky ass shit like every single day. Hi, I'm John. I'm a chemistry graduate student at UCLA, and now in this video, we're going to be going over some chemistry topics. Hope you find this useful, and good luck in your course. All right, so now let's move on to signal splitting in proton NMR spectrum. So we've seen now that three types of information can be derived from examining a spectrum. From the number of signals, we can determine the number of sets of equivalent hydrogens. From the integration of signal areas, we can determine the relative numbers of hydrogens that give rise to each signal. And from the chemical shift of each signal, we derive information about the types of hydrogens in each set. Now, a fourth kind of information can be derived from the splitting pattern of each signal. In many situations, the degree of signal splitting can be predicted on the basis of the n plus 1 rule. According to this rule, if a hydrogen has n hydrogens non-equivalent to it, but equivalent among themselves on the same or adjacent atoms, its proton NMR signal is split into n plus 1 peaks. So let's apply this n plus 1 rule to the analysis of the spectrum for this molecule here, 1,1-dichloroethane. So the three hydrogens of this CH3 group have one non-equivalent neighbor hydrogen, this guy. Therefore, the signal for these three hydrogens is going to be split into a doublet. The signal hydrogen, or the uh, single hydrogen here on the CH, has a set of three non equivalent neighbor hydrogens. So here N is three due to these guys. And so this is going to be split into N plus one, or four, or a quartet. Now let's try a couple more. How about this molecule? So this molecule has three sets of equivalent hydrogens labeled here as A, B, and C. Now based on the n plus 1 rule for nearby or adjacent hydrogens, we can see that the peak attributed to the hydrogens in C here are going to be a triplet because here the n is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so it's a triplet. The signal attributed to the B hydrogens is going to be a quartet. And then we'll also have a singlet for these three hydrogens, labeled as A. The integrated signal area for them is going to have a ratio of 3 for the signet, to 2 for the quartet, to 3 for this triplet. Now what about this molecule? Again, this is going to have three sets of equivalent hydrogens labeled as A, B, and C here. Just like in the molecule on the left, the hydrogens or the A hydrogens here is going to be, uh, the, that peak is going to be a singlet. The hydrogens in C here, that signal is going to be a doublet because here N is just 1, N plus 1 is 2, doublet. And then for the B hydrogen here, this has uh, six nearby hydrogens. So the N is going to be six, and it's the peak splitting is going to be a septet, or a splitting pattern of seven. So the N plus one rule is a very easy way um, to, to try to interpret the spectra, but let's talk a little bit about the actual origins of the signal splitting, or the physical explanation of it. Proton NMR signals are split into multiple peaks when molecules contain non-equivalent hydrogen atoms that are separated by no more than three bonds. The multiple peaks are the result of spin-spin coupling between the proton nuclei. This is an interaction in which the nuclear spins of adjacent atoms influence each other. Now, the nuclear spin, and hence the chemical shift, of the atom labeled H A here in this figure is influenced by the adjacent atom H B, whose nuclear spin might be aligned with or against the applied magnetic field. 
So in other words, the signal for HA is going to be different if HB has its nuclear spin aligned with or against the applied magnetic field. And across the population of molecules in a sample, there will be similar numbers of molecules having each spin alignment for HB. The result is that the signal for the HA atom appears in the spectrum as a doublet. In this hypothetical example, the signal for HB is also going to be split into a similar doublet owing to HA because the effect operates in both directions. Now a coupling constant J, shown here as this difference, the PPM here between uh, the two peaks, the doublets in the HA and the HB signals. This separation uh, between peaks is a quantitative measure of the influence of the magnetic moments of adjacent nuclei. This constant, this magnetic coupling constant, is expressed in hertz. And for protons in HNMR spectroscopy, it's generally in the range of about 0 to 18 hertz. This value is independent of the external applied magnetic field. It only depends on um, the fields induced by other nuclei within the molecule. Now, there are definitely more uh, complex splitting patterns uh, that you see in NMR spectroscopy, but they're probably beyond the scope of this course. Um, however, we can summarize a couple general um, rules to be able to see or observe proton-proton coupling or see signal splitting. So the first general rule is that the protons must not be equivalent. So in the molecule ethane here, uh, the protons are equivalent, and therefore they do not couple. Secondly, generally they must not be more than three bonds apart. So coupling can be observed in the cases of HCH and HCCH but not any greater than that, not really more than three bonds. Uh, the hydrogens must not be bonded to oxygen or nitrogen. So OH and NH proton NMR signals are usually singlets. The coupling is suppressed due to the rapid intermolecular hydrogen exchange. Um, I'm not really going into that in this video, but if you're interested or you need to know it for your course, you can probably find it in your textbook. Um, the coupling may be seen if the sample is very pure or if the hydrogen bonding is sterically hindered, uh, but both of these are rare occurrences. And then finally, uh, the protons must obey the benzene ring-gated community rule. So aryl protons, or protons bonded to a benzene ring, can only couple with other aryl protons. Protons not bonded to the benzene ring cannot couple with aryl protons. With my mind on my money.